So one of the issues that Team Matrix has had for a while is their problems with Tom River Rats. Tom's River Rats ended their season last year in the playoffs, and they've also given them a loss this year. However, you got two new people that weren't around last year that are looking to change that. Am I right, Dave Adams? And I'm not used to seeing you wearing that jersey. Yeah, it's a little new this year, but uh, you know, we've had a pretty good run so far. So wasn't here last year, so we're going to see if that makes a difference and hopefully a uh, different outcome than they had last year. Uh, improvement on the squash squad, definitely. I mean, I'm doing all right. I get lucky once in a while. 242 average? Is it? Yeah. It's okay. I had a bad match last time. Oh, only 242. <laughs> Struggled a little bit. So I go from a veteran to a relative uh, new per newcomer here in the UBA, though not really a newcomer, even though he looks like he's 12, which is the first time that I saw him as he went into smart events and junior events and started dominating that circuit. Now he's uh, looking to dominate over here. This is Jason Wichnovich, and you're going to hear that name a lot in the UBA in the future, I have a feeling. How's it going? Everything's good. Come here to win today. You know, snagged a division for us. Mm -hmm. how, how do you like it so far, the first year in the UBA for you? Uh, I like it a lot, honestly. Uh, it's a different environment, very competitive. I like the competition and, uh, you know, a lot of money in the wood. That is very true. Now, just to remind people, because you still look like you're 12, how old are you? 21. This is 21 right now. I feel really, really old. How old do you feel right now? About 110, so that's good. Yeah, I'm, I don't I, feel that old. I think old. we add up both the other guys' ages on my team today. They might be the same as me, so we're okay. Uh, any questions before you? I'm, any questions? Anything you want to say before your match? I'll let the ball and do the talking, that's all. Dave, anything from you? Same way. We'll, see, we'll, we'll go out there and... Uh, show what we're going to do. All right. I wish you guys the best. Good luck. So, Robbie Guzman, you've already said, and I'm sure the audio has just picked that up, that you're going to kick some booty I later. Talking my, I was talking to my brother about that one. He's running his mouth back there. I had to give him a little bit. Well, one of the things that you've been running is you've been running over Team Matrix. Last season, you took them out in the playoffs. You ended their season. This season, I believe you beat them already. Would That's I be true. correct on that? That is correct. That is correct. We had a pretty good year so far against them, and hopefully we keep it going today. And right now you're in first place, correct? That is correct, yes. And I believe you're up by, what, five points, six points? Yeah, we need uh, 18 points today to lock first. So 18, that's it. You lock it. Congratulations. I believe you've already clinched a playoff spot regardless of what happens? That is correct, yep. So this is maybe not just for pride and obviously the money that goes with first. Any thought of let's send a message now, so just a reminder, if we meet in the playoffs, this is what's going to happen? 100%, uh, yes. I feel like last year everyone was surprised when we started striking. I know. You personally were a little surprised when we made that run at the end of the year. So we want to keep it going now. So everyone that was, last year wasn't a fluke, and we can still do it this year. Well, one of the things that I said specifically, and let, let's go back to that. Let, let's have a little fun. One of the things I specifically said in my top 50s is that you guys had the talent, didn't put it together, didn't put it together, didn't put it together. It's like, when are you going to put it together? Last year, near the end, you snuck in, finally put it together. Yeah. Won your first two matches, I believe, last season. Almost got to battle ball. That is correct. Yep, we had a pretty good run in playoffs. To put it a little late, but it's only a matter when you get hot, right? You don't have to get hot early. You got to do it at the end. Absolutely. So now you took that, and we talk about this all the time. What do you do with the momentum from last year? You took that momentum from last year. Now you're in first place. So you optimize what you did last year, which is great. 100%. 100%. Use last year as a uh, building block for this year. Hopefully, it helps us keep going now. So, how much talking are we going to be hearing from you and your brother today? Um. You might hear a little bit. I know we were uh, a little loud last year, so we're going to try to, if the situation fits, we'll be talking a little bit. One person that I did not see on your lineup that I thought that I was going to see in your lineup today, Russ Goss. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's actually out at Nationals this week. A lot of our guys are out bowling uh, the Open. So Russ is confident enough that you guys are going to do well so that he's over there hoping that you guys take care of business over here. Absolutely. We feel like our, bet, our nine, no matter who we got out there, has a chance to beat any nine, so we're, we're ready to go. All right. Uh, anything you want to say? Any comments? Um, no, it should be good. Hopefully it's a good day. All right. I wish the best of luck. Thank you. This is Gordon Pepper, and welcome to Central New Jersey, where we have our last tour stop of the UBA season. Believe it or not, 2022 season... 2022-2023 season, regular season, just about winding up. And we're going to finish it off here with the New Jersey Shore District. 
This is gonna be fun because first place is on the line. Tom's River Rats currently in first place, going up against Team Matrix. They are in second. Basically, the magic number is 23 for Tom's River Rats. They are very, very close to locking this one up. If, if they get 23, they win. If they don't get 23 and the Matrix beats them, Matrix, Matrix takes over, they take first place. And they'll do a repeat of what they did last season, which is starting up, or starting in the di district in first and winning it in first. However, they probably don't want to see what happened to them during the playoffs. The, last year, they were the number one seed. Matrix was the number four seed. I'm sorry, Matrix was the number one seed. Tom's River Rats was the number four seed. River Rats knocked out Team Matrix. In the playoffs, so a little bit on the line here. Matrix probably wants to send a message saying, hey, this is not going to happen again. And Tom's River Rats wants to send a message saying, hey, second verse seems the first. While everybody's gathering around, let's go over our lineups. Tom River Rats here on the scratch pair. Michael and Robbie Guzman with the Kevin Rossiter in the middle. Their first handicap pair, Theodore Stevens Jr., Mark Berry, Jim Rogers. Their second handicap pair, Lauren and Austin Cordero going up first and second. Anchoring up, Brian Rossiter. Team Matrix, your scratch pair. Jason Wichnovich, Matthew Gibney, finishing off with Dave Adams Jr. If he looks familiar and not necessarily in a Matrix uniform, he was part of New Jersey Drillers. Then he decided he wanted to move up here. And there he is from New Jersey Drillers to Team Matrix. First handicap was starting off with Daniel, Daniel Coppola, or Coppola, depending on how you pronounce it. Dave Saban, Dan Dunleavy. And finally, that third handicap pair. And this is going to be a fun handicap pair. You have Doug Haran, Nick Mattaggart, and Tom Panabianco. Now, Haran and Panabianco have both won the Northeast World Championship Series title. So it's the first time in a very long time you've got two titleists on the same pair on the same team. Last time that happened was, I believe, Alex Prell and Tom Twist over on May over on Legacy. I was going to say Matrix. No, neither of them are on Matrix. They're both on Legacy. At that point, Alex Prell no longer on Legacy. He's now part of the hit squad, DHS, which I believe will make the playoffs. So we're going to see a little of Alex Prell eventually. But right now, we're going to be starting up with this match. And I expected to see... Well, I expect to see a lot of marks. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing a bunch of opens at this moment. First one from the Tom River Rats, Richard Rich and I, right now looking to make the seven pin pick up the spare he does. Matrix right now, a quick lead on scratch. First handicap pair. Now I'm seeing over here that they just moved over, second handicap pair over from lane seven and eight to lanes one and two. Which means I need to move over. Which means everybody needs to move over. So pardon me one second. I'm going to be hanging out in the middle. So now, even though it looks like I'm behind, I'm behind the handicap pair leads one and two, I'm actually behind the scratch pair. I'm going to move very, very carefully so I don't screw up any of the wiring because I am very danger prone. I'm likely to do that and likely to have something fall on my head, fall on somebody else's head. So while they are practicing on the second handicap pair, going back over to scratch, Tom's River Rats right now, both Guzmans staring at opens in the first frame. And Kevin Rossiter has given his opinion on both Guzmans, and I believe uh, he is equating that to a slurping sound. I will not mention the exact type of slurping sound because, hey, this is for kids. So by the way, if you're looking at this, Tom's River Rats are A, P, A, B, and C. Team Matrix, D, E, and F, and Team Matrix is starting exactly how you'd expect them to. Spare from the leadoff bowler, Wichnovich, and strikes from Gidney and Adams Jr. Matrix will have a very quick 20-pin lead, and that's what it's going to be. And obviously, they can start on fire very quickly. Now going over here on the first handicap pair. Right now, nothing but marks. Couple is starting off with a strike on, on frame two. Theodore Stevens Jr. trying to figure that, trying to match him, he does not. Seven pin. Everybody's trying to figure out the lanes at this moment. Second handicap pair right now, still in practice. 
Spencer waiting over there. We have the Padrino over. It's paired up with Douglas Haran again. This is going to be really interting to see two former WCS Northeast Heavyweight Champions. You world champion, Tom, not world champion. As Douglas Haran has come over and started chat already. I am sure we will be hearing multiple times from Douglas Haran. Which is fun. This is his team. So they're looking for a repeat. Right now, River Rats is looking for strikes. And right now, strikes are all on the Matrix side in the scratch area. Gibney right now looking to double up, and he does. Matrix starting to put pressure early on in the scratch squad, going over the first handicap. Tom's River Rats. No, they still haven't gotten their first. Actually, yes, they did. They finally got their first double up there on the board. Spare attempt by Guzman. Scratch pair. Now to go look, Dan, Dan Levy over on Team Matrix. Look at the double. He doesn't. Seven pin. So with a double from Jim Rogers over from Tom's River Rats, Handicap pair can take a quick lead over from the Tom's River Rats. Now the difference in a handicap on both squads is minimal. I say minimal. We all know every pin counts, but it's still minimal. Rogers with a double. Tom's River Rats is getting 13 pins on handicap num pair number one, and they're getting 16, pair 16 pins on handicap pair number two. Now handicap pair two has started. Doug Haran leading off for Matrix. He leaves a four pin. Lauren Cordero leading off for Tom's River Rats. There's a strike. Now, for anybody just joining us in the UBA, here's how all this works. You get points for each game that you win. Two points per game. If you win the series, it is four points. The most amount of points that each trio's team can take is ten. In addition to that, there's a bonus ten points that are available for the overall wood. In other words, the team that's got the most amount of wood. Usually... Not always, but usually if you get that, you win the game. You win the game, you win the match. And that could determine who wins this district. Again, the points are very close here in terms of the standings, which is why, again, 23 is the magic number. Michael Guzman right now. Actually, I'm sorry, Robbie Guzman right now for the first strike from him for the River Rats. Sorry! <laughs> that's true, I, did, I didn't call him Brian yet. That, that, that's very true. So right now, looking over at the scratch side, Matrix taking an extra 30 pins on top. It looks like they had a quick 50. Michael Guzman, there he is. He's got his first strike of the game. And Tom's River Rats needs a lot more, and more importantly, they need to connect because Matrix is throwing strikes, and they're linking them. Richard Rich looking for his second. Won't get it. Six pin, a little bit high. First handicap pair. Tom's River Rats right now has got a little bit of a lead. Looking to make a spare here to hold on, or if they will. That from Mark Berry for the River Rats. Don't, don't leave me. He's looking to make his spare over from Team Matrix. On lanes 5 and 6, he will. Now, second handicap pair, which right now is on lanes 1 and 2. I know everybody's expecting... Well, you got the scratch pairs usually on the left, which is true. They're usually the leftmost pair, except for the fact that 7 and 8 had to move. They had some sort of issue, so now they're on 1 and 2. So if you're looking at this, you have second handicap pair on lanes 1 and 2, scratch on 3 and 4, first handicap pair on 5 and 6. So you got both handicap pairs flanking the scratch pair. Except if you're Tom's River Rats right now, if you're watching, you're wondering, wait, that's the scratch pair for Tom River Rats right now? Yes, it is. And Team Matrix taking more than advantage of it. Three in a row for Gibney. Adams is looking to make three in a row. And right now, should they do that, you're looking at almost an 80-pin lead on the scratch, and we're not even done with the third frame yet. This is, of course, what Team Matrix needs. They need to win by a considerable margin. Now, the good news for both teams is that 
I do not think, based on the standings, either of them can be jumped. So this is between first and second. No one else is going to be able to join the party. Three in a row for Coppola. And a Greek church over for Stevens. He will not make the spare. Matrix right now starting to catch up a little bit on Tom's River Rats. River Rats still has the lead, but the question is how long the first handicap pair. Second handicap pair just starting out. Got a pair of marks on top for Haran. McTaggart and Panabianco looking to double up. And Brian Rossiter right now looking to not do what he did. That's still makeable, one, two, eight. Brian Rossiter right now up for Tom's River Rats. Ooh, that didn't look good. Gets away with it, Tempin. That almost was a disaster up there. It's not terrible. You can make the spare. McTaggart will make the spare for Team Matrix. Penabianco, El Padinino up on lanes one and two. Quick check over here. So a lot of people still stringing at this moment. Rogers is looking to make it four in a row. He will. Rogers right now keeping keeping Tom River Rats in this on the first handicap side. They're up by four. A mark. A mark from Dan Dunleavy, aka Dunn. And Matrix will take the lead on the first handicap pair. Matrix already has the lead on the scratch pair. Don't leave it right now looking for a mark. There's a mark. That's a strike. Matrix up four marks, just three. So the 13 pins that Tom River Rats had in terms of the handicap, that's gone. Matrix will now have the lead there. Now let's go over to the second handicap pair. Now the question that I have is is the handicaps in there it does not look like the handicaps are in there so now we've got it now we got to mathematically add 16 pins over to whatever whatever heck team matrix is doing dougie's looking for his first strike and not getting it yet still 10 pin matrix right now in decent shape they're holding their own in the second handicap and they just took the lead on the first handicap Coppola, again, another strike. Four in a row for him. Theodore Stevens Jr. right now struggling, to say the least. He's got a 61 in the fourth, and he's got a wash in the fifth, possible another open. Coming up, that'd be two in a row with the Greek church, and it will be two in a row with the Greek church. Stevens right now struggling. He's going to need Barry and, and Jim Rogers to pick it up for him. Speaking of which, here comes Barry in the fifth frame. Speaking of which, going into the fifth frame on the scratch side. Matrix with a comfortable 64 pin lead over on scratch. And that was the assumption that Robbie Guzman would strike, and he does. Matrix up 64, going into the fifth frame on scratch on game one. Barry right now on lane five, looking to double, he does. Yeah, Barry and Rogers have got have got to double keep Stevens Jr. in this and then hope that Matrix does not start to carry. Coppola's stringing him right now. They need Dan Dudley to not do that and he won't, Tempin. Rogers coming up, looking to double right here on lanes five and six we're talking about right now. Jason Wichnovich on scratch, leaving nine pin. All right, now, Team Matrix has not left an open yet on the scratch side, of course, now that I've just said that. Hey. So they've been clean on the scratch side. They've been clean on the first handicap side. And they've been clean. Team Matrix has not opened yet. You said that, Jim Rogers doubling up. They're going to keep it at four marks. Assuming that Dully does not make me look like a fool at this moment and gets the spare. We're going to be tied for marks 4-4. Four, four. He'll make the spare. of Tom's River Rats holding on to the handicap a little bit they're up plus five 
plus the 13. So they're still up by around 18 pins going to the sixth frame and handicap number one. Now going scratch side, middle. That'd be the middle pair. Again, it's weird for me to say that because now I gotta double check everything because the pair's moved over. Gibney looking for a strike, he gets it. That's five in a row for him. Five in a row for Coppola on the first handicap side. El Padrino with now basically links one and two. Everybody's griping a little bit because, hey, they're on a corner pair. Well, sorry, you're on a corner pair. Padrino looking to make the spare. Anyway, you know, one of the things in terms of the UBA is your technical game. Starting strikes, yeah, well, that's great. But the good teams are technically sound. And I say that because, and now I'm going to, yeah. I was about to say, I'm going to say that because nobody in Team Matrix is open yet. And now Dave Adams is a big four. Just a reminder to everybody, I'm known as the Dark Cloud. Oh, and we almost had a 7-10 to go along with the big four. I'm known as the Dark Cloud because almost nobody will throw a 300 in my presence. And usually, when I point that stuff out, the 300 goes away. So Dave Adams will almost certainly give us the first open from Matrix. That being said, Matrix has got a very nice cushion at this moment. Dave Adams not really happy with his shot. I can't blame him. Big four. Matrix still very comfortably up in the scratch area. Tom's River Rats can chip away a little bit. And Guzman will do that. Right now we're looking at a 50-pin lead from Matrix over the scratch side. Handicap side. Dunleavy with a strike over here. Jim Rogers, however, holding on to Tom's River Rats. He's got the front five. He's looking for the front six. Let's focus over here on lanes five and six. Rogers looking for six. And, of course, because I said everybody focus on it, he doesn't do anything. Four, seven. So if, if Tom's River Rats wants to keep the lead on lanes five and six, Rogers is going to need to make the spare. Meanwhile, Tom's River Rats, let's look over here on lanes one and two, handicap side. Lauren Cordero on fire for the River Rats. She's got the front four. Adrino looking to get his first strike. And he does. Rossiter looking for his double. Over here, Tom's River Rats. That ball looks good. Looking to double up. Got a little bit of leeway between them and Matrix. Does not happen. 3 6, three, six 9 10. Right now, at the halfway point, as of right now, Tom's River Rats has gotten. It was up on both handicap. They hasn't gotten anything yet. Dunleavy, I'm sorry, Dan Coppola. Looking to extend the six in a row does not. He's a 10 pin. Stevens finally gets a double. Barry right now over in five and six looking to make this four in a row. Looking at the Fort Bagger here. Will he get it? Yes, he will. So after being pressed a little bit by Team Matrix on links five and six, Tom River Rats holding on. Coppola right now with the spare. Makes that it's still fairly close. Matrix is technically ahead in the handicap based on scratch, except the handicap pins are not added in yet. So it's Thomas River Rats that's up by a little bit. Adams will redeem himself over that big four. So he gets a strike, Wichnovich with a big four of his own. So three, regardless of that, because of Gibney's front six, they're really going to increase their lead because the best that River Rats can do is two marks. That's on the scratch side. Going over to handicap two, Doug Haran finally joins the party. Doug Haran, small sample size, finally got his first strike. But you finally got a strike. How you doing? Doug, talk to us about that strike. What do you want to know, Doug? I got a strike, bro. You you're the last person anywhere to get a strike. I know. I know. I don't bowl no more, Gordon. You don't bowl anymore. Okay. He's retired. Okay, so so Doug is Doug is retired. 
apparently. He may come out of retirement if he starts stringing. We'll see if that happens. Right now, on that pair, there is somebody that's stringing, though, and that is Lauren Cordero for the Tom's River Rats. We'll get to that momentarily. Let's go over to Stratch. Which is coming up. Right now, Matrix up by around 60 over on Scratch. And they have the wood. It is early at this point to be talking about overall wood, but we're still going to talk about it. Which is leaving a 2-7. Michael Guzman over Tom's River Rats. He had a three-bagger, and then he washed. Let's see what he does over here in the seventh frame. I don't know whether or not it's nerves, whether or not people just can't find the pocket. A little bit tentative on from both teams at this point, with the exception of Matthew Gibney, who's got front sex. Couple of now coming back in with a strike. Stevens looking to go three in a row. Nah, does not do a tempin. I was about to say, Stevens redeeming himself after a little bit shaky start. However, he's getting picked up. Barry and Rogers, and again, Salon lanes five and six. Barry and Rogers, so far through seven frames, 14 shots, strikes, only two spares. They're keeping their handicap team float. On the other side, handicap two, here comes Cordero. She's got the front five. Lanes one and two, can she make it front six? Yes, yeah, she can. Six in a row for Laura Cordero. Usually I just say last name, except Austin Cordero is right behind her. Not a slouch, he's working on three in a row. Doug Haran's looking for a double, and he gets it. So the retired bowler's got a double. Austin Cordero looking to get three in a row. And of course, now that I noted that Matthew Gibney has a front six, leaves a seven pin, that streak is over. Looking to make the spare here. And he'll make it. Dave Adams Jr. is now up on scratch. If he can double, then Matrix will still be up around 60. Austin Cordero, meanwhile, there's another strike. Three and a for him. Now down to Brian Rossiter on the second handicap pair. And I don't know what's going on in the scratch pair of Tom River Rats, but it doesn't look like any of them will break a 170 at this point. The River Rats are not getting hooked, Gordon. The River Rats are not, they, they beat us last year by mistake because they, they all wore no sleeves. Did they beat you early on this year by mistake? Huh? They, they beat you early on this year also. I didn't bowl that time. I thought you bowling this one. I don't, huh? You're bowling this to a stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, they need me. I don't know. Well, Doug says they need him. Right right now, what they need is people stop striking the handicap pairs. And they didn't need Brian Rosser to throw a double, but yet he did. Six. We have one, two, three, four, five, eight out of nine strikes over for Thomas River Rats on the second handicap pair. They're starting to open lead. They're starting to open up a lead on the handicap pair. We tag it with the spare over for Team Matrix. Penny Bianco looking to get three bag of his own. Try to Try to at least match up Mark to March. He does that, then Tom's River Rats will only be up around 30. Going over now, first handicap pair. And what I was saying before is Barry and Rogers trying to hold up Tom's River Rats. They did not do it in the eighth frame. They have doubles from Team Matrix in the form of Dave Saban and Dan Dunleavy, and all of a sudden, that lead that Tom's River Rats has is being threatened, and that's not going to help. Stevens, another potential open. That's going to be his third. So right now you have three opens for Stevens, one for Mark Berry. And I say that and as a comparison because no opens on Matrix. And here's Coppola looking to strike again. And there it is, another one. Only two nine spares from Coppola. Everything else has been strikes. Only two nine spares from Dave Saban. Everything else has been strikes. And only two nine spares and a seven spare from Dan Dunleavy. Everything else has been strikes. Is he going to make the spare? No. He will not. And we're going to look at stretch a little bit here. Wichovich with the 130 in the eighth frame. 
but they're still comfortably up. Doug Haran has finally made his presence known. He's got a three-bagger, and he's chatting a little bit with Lauren Cordero, and maybe he should because Lauren right now has got the front six. Lauren looking at the front seven right now. That ball looks good. No, 10-pin. Doug says no. She ain't never bowled 300 in her life. She wasn't going to do it today either. She still has two more shots to do at 300 today, but the one thing is certain, well, she will not be bowling 300 this game. That's a definitive. So we have a strike over here from Mark Berry. Let's focus over on planes five and six because that's almost done. Dave Saban with Team Matrix's first open on that pair. Team Matrix has been bowling very, very well. And, and they're going to snag the scratch. The question is, can they snag any of the handicaps? Rogers right now, he's got to throw a strike here. There it is. Two strikes over going... Two strikes over in Tom River Ratside going in the 10th frame. However, big shot potential from Dan Dunleavy. Strike over here. Matrix will be up 42, and more importantly, they will be up in the game going in the 10th frame. Big shot here for Dan. Oh my goodness, 7 10. That is a big, big potential open over there for Team Matrix. And all of a sudden, this went from Team Matrix threatening to open, to blow the doors off to a close to a tie game going in the 10th frame. Here we go in the 10th frame. Now again, the handicap, I do not believe, is in there. We'll find out when we add everything up. So it says, right now, Matrix up by 25. They're actually not. Matrix up by 12. Only person right now with a mark on Matrix's side is Coppola, but Coppola's got a double, and he's got a double to Jim Stevens open. I'm sorry, Theodore Stevens Jr. open. Coppola right now, big shot coming up here for Matrix. No, sir, four pin. So that ends the string, and it will give Tom's River Rats a chance to get back into this one. Stevens with a 6-9. Right now, Tom's River Rats looking to maybe get some daylight in here. Maybe give themselves a chance. Gibney says, no, I don't want to give you a chance. There's a strike. Dave Adams right now looking to seal the deal over on the scratch side. Oh my, what what are we doing over here? Tom, Tom's River Rats, another open from Theodore Stevens Jr. He's going to finish with a 150. And now he needs, a, and again, Tom's River Rats definitely could have used those extra pins. He's going to need his two bottom bowlers to carry. And when I say carry, throw some strikes. The one good thing is that both Barry and Rogers are going into strikes, going into 10th frame. Coppola is going to finish off with a very nice 248 game. Coppola by himself almost up by 100 pins. Dave Adams not thrilled with that shot. Still don't think they have anything to worry about unless they have a gigantic meltdown. And speaking of gigantic meltdowns, 467 over from Mark Berry. And they they had the lead, and they had the lead comfortably during the whole entire game. However, they don't have the lead now. And big shot by Saban coming up. There's a strike. Now the other question is can they can Matrix do enough at this point? Gonna get two. Mark Berry finishes with 225. It looks like now they may have had the handicap in there, so if they did, Tom's River Rats may escape on the handicap side. A double from Dave Saban. Saban can go out for 233. 
Uh, no, I thought Tom's River Rats was going to have a chance to escape. They will not. There's another open. Four, six, seven, nine. A disaster from the Tom River Rats over in the 10th frame. And again, Tom's River Rats was leading the whole entire game. And then things started to fall apart in the 8th frame over in the handicap pair number one. Rogers finishes with a 224 and yipes. Let's see if my math here is correct. It usually is, but let's just confirm. They have 599 scratch plus 56 handicap. That is 655. That's not very good. Saving right now. Strikes finishes that off 233. Yeah. Uh, handicap Paris, Tom's River Rats is getting 13, and they're going to lose by more than 13, so you're not winning that one. Uh, this other pair is determined by 16. Right now, comfortable lead. So there, there's a good shot over here that Tom's River Rats will take the second handicap pair. However, that's not over. Still a little bit on the close side. Dan Dunleavy with a split of his own, but I don't think that's going to matter. So Dunleavy will finish somewhere in the 190s, but Matrix will take Matrix will take the the first handicap pair. I'm saying second because it's on the right side. It's first, and Matrix looks like will take the first scratch pair. Guzman will finish with a 209. Wichnevich 166. And while Michael Guzman has figured it out with a 209, Matrix has already figured it out. Dunleavy looks like to take two. He will. So Dunleavy's going to finish with 192. Let's do some more math here. So Matrix 673 scratch plus a 43 handicap, 716. So they will not only win, what was close during the whole entire game turns into a little bit of a mini blowout. They're up by 61 on the handicap side and that was from a team that was pretty much had it the whole entire time. So yeah, their handicap's not in there. So that's good to know. So 599 scratch, 673 scratch, my math is right. So yeah, so they're up by 61. That one's done. Gibney will open, he'll finish with a 236, but again, that's gonna be more than enough. Dave Adams is gonna leave a 10 pin, but that's also, I'm sorry, Dave Adams is up now. Rosser is gonna finish with a 191, and that's one of the reasons why that 236 is gonna be good enough. Dave Adams, another 10 pin. No problems. The best Tom's River Rats can do if he finishes out is another 60 pins. And Matrix is already up by 61. Hey, three. I like three. Oh, very, very big pickup. We're going to focus over here in the second handicap pair momentarily. But let's finish this up. At least they're going to be able to finish out the gap a little bit. Robbie Guzman leaving the 3 6. 910, again, he'll finish somewhere in the 160s or 170s. And on scratch, that is no good. No, that open from Adams is no good, but it doesn't matter at this point. Adams is going to finish with 201. So Matrix, which threatened to throw the doors off, finishes with a 603 scratch. That being said, that's going to be more than good enough to win the uh, scratch pair. Guzman will finish out with around a 170 something or other. Now, let's focus on the second handicap pair. Because they were starting off strong. They sort of pewed out a little bit. Now, again, the handicap's not in there, so they're getting another 16. So, Tom's River Rats up by 61. There's a very good chance they're going to take this game. Cordero, Lauren Cordero, leaves Tempin. 
I keep on just using the last names. There's two Corderos over there. I can't just use the last names. All right, Guzman finishing with an ungraceful 178. Well, you definitely put on a show. Not sure if it's a show that you wanted to charge admission for at this point. So Matrix, after being up by round 60, holds on the win by 25. Cordero right now with the open. There's another chance for Matrix to make more ground. Doug Haran barely makes this pair. Lauren's going to finish with a 212. So she's going to be right around average. Douglas or Dougie or Beanie Warren guy or however you want to pronounce. However you want to call him is going to finish under average. Austin Cordero is going to pick up the slack right there. Huge strike. If you're looking over here, Tom's River Rats has got an open from Cordero and a mark. Compared to a spare, a strike, a double, I should say, and a fill by Doug Haran. He's going to finish with the 204. So whereas Matrix is probably going to run out of room to take this, it's still possible that they can take it. Tom's River Rats still got to fill a little bit here. 2-5. Nick McTaggart working on a spare. Right now, around 60-something pin lead. Tiger, big shot here. That looks not good. 3-6-10. And as we heard, an expletive from the former Northeast End World Heavyweight Champion, which I'm hoping did not get picked up on the mic. Uh, however, that four-letter word does mean something, which is mathematically they're pretty much done. Handicap is not it. So they're asking if the handicap is in. The answer is no. Austin will finish with 201. I don't know. Scores are a little bit. Scores started out really strong for everybody. Started to taper off a little bit. Sort of expecting the game to wind up being as the game is. Especially in a match of this magnitude. There will be a spare. Look on the, on the fill from McTaggart. Tom Bianco is up with, again, a three-bagger versus a spare from Rossiter. If Rossiter gets any sort of mark, this game's going to be out. If Rossiter makes a major mistake, this becomes very interesting. Rossiter comes up. This looks to seal the deal on the handicap, and it will. Now it's in. Okay. Doug Haran's got sent of feelings now. He doesn't want me to yell at him. I don't yell at anybody. I have a loud voice. I broadcast and project my voice. I don't yell. For the people that have actually heard me yell, which is no one in a bowling alley, you don't want to be around when I yell. When I yell, I you don't want to be near me. Keep like a 30 feet radius away from me when I lose my temper. It has not happened in a UVA match, though. It takes a lot for me to lose it. And trust me, people have tried. <laughs> Look, if the second shot got it. I mean, game was out. Game was out anyway. But now it's a question of markage. Gonna be on light now, looking to close out. Good strike there. Matrix is gonna close the gap, and they're gonna close the gap royally. But five more pins from Rosser will end this one. Rosser opened up his hand looking for four. He basically got yelled at and said, get five. All right. And that'll be five, and that'll be enough. So despite Matrix's best efforts to come back and win this one, Tom Torres is going to hold on. Rossiter finishing with a 224. Time to do some quick math here. 637 plus 69, 706. McTaggart finishes with a 201. Uh, I'm sorry, no, McTaggart's going to finish with a 199. 
Then I'm going to wait for Panabianco to finish out. After we finish, uh, okay, now we're done over here. And Bianco finishes with a 28. Now we can do some more math. Got a 631 plus 53, 684. And so Matrix loses that one by 22 pins. So for a recap at the end of game one, Team Matrix is up 42. Team Matrix is also up on the wood by around 64 pins, give or take. I'm going to double check with the official score person to make sure that I'm correct on this. Hey, Brian. I just want to confirm what I have matches what you have since you're the official score. And all right, we match. Yay. All right, that's good. Thank you, Brian. So it, it looks like right now Matrix is up on the wood by around 64 pins. 64. Okay. So my math matches the official scoring, that's good. So Tom's River Rats is down, but that based on how they started out, that could have been a lot worse. So this, despite, you guys are only down by 60 at this point for overall wood. That being said, now everybody's starting to walk over here. So Michael apparently doesn't talk, but I know Robbie does. So what's about to happen today? All right, let, let's have a conversation here with with Doug and Michael. Hold on. Well, hey, hold on. Well, come on, let go, let go. What's about to happen, uh, Michael? Michael, gonna go throw a shot. You about to lose today, bro. You guys thought you were good by being number one coming into today, but you're not gonna be number one after today. You know what I'm saying? We have 17 frames left. 17. We got we got 19. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, theoretically, you got 18 frames left over here on the scratch side, not 17. Uh, that, okay. They also have 18, not 17. Okay, Michael, not very good with math. He's easily... Oh, my goodness. We. I, I'm going to... Okay, yeah, I am going to ask. Which side are you rooting on? What, what fan club are you part of? Team Matrix or uh, River Rats? River Rats. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, it's Mama Guzman. I am honored to be here with Mama Guzman. I don't think Mama Guzman's liking what she's seeing from the firstborn son, though. Who's the firstborn son? Is that Robbie? Oh, I'm sorry, for the secondborn son. Firstborn son, uh... Firstborn son so far, double. Pretty good. Secondborn son, double, and then that. Double, and then miss a head pin. I'm going to chat with Matthew Gibney here for one second. What's up? Well, first of all, I think you had the high score in the pair. Yeah, lucky yeah. game. Yeah, both pretty good. You're, you're, so far, you're keeping everybody in line. What, what do you guys need to do to do better than what you did game one? But, yeah, you did win, but you shot a 6-0. 6-0 yeah, usually is not going to get it done on scratch. How do you guys improve? Uh, make better shots and make some spares. That's really it. I don't know. Knock down more pins. Knock down more pins. I'm not good at the interviews. You're fine on the interviews. You are fine. No, no chance. Uh, no, I'm going to get everybody before before the uh, day is over. Doug may help me snag people, especially from Tom's River Rats. So, Robbie Guzman. It's funny because I now have to, twice, I have two Guzmans and I have two Corderos. So I just can't say Cordero and I just can't say Guzman. However, I will say Lauren Cordero is up. She started with the front six game one, and she's got the front two game two. Right now, Tom's River Rats again making a little bit of a lead over on Team Matrix on the Handicap Pair 2 side, which is, again, if you're just joining us, Handicap Pair 2 is on lanes one and two, Scratch is three and four, Handicap Pair Lane one is on five and six. First two games, uh, or shall I say the first game on Scratch and Handicap 1 in the first two games. On the front side, taken by Team Matrix. The second, the Handicap pair, the second Handicap pair. Or the pair on lanes 1 and 2, taken by Tom's River Rats. Matrix has overall wood, and Dougie just...
graced us with a shimmy, or I don't know what that was, with a double over in second frame, matching up with Lauren Cordero. Scratch side, a lot of people doing strikes. Let's let's focus. We haven't gone to lanes five and six. That's handicap pair one, and that's actually going quicker than the scratch pair, which goes to show how many strikes they're throwing versus how many non-strikes the scratch pair is throwing. Right now, Matrix down a little bit at this point. They've started to stumble a little bit out of the gate. One open from everybody on Matrix, and about to be two opens from, from Dan Dunleavy over at Matrix. Keeping in mind, this is the same team that I said technically they were great right out of the gate. They only have one open, and now that I've just focused, there's another one. Opens for everybody, Dark Cloud strikes again, and no 300s on lanes five and six. Now you understand why I'm called the Dark Cloud now? Yes, I do. And this, and now that I've just mentioned that, we got another one. The dark Cloud strikes again. Uh, dark, dark Cloud's just wrecking havoc all over the place in game two. Doug, Doug's wanting a date from Mama Guzman. Okay then. It's okay, Mama. I mean, what? I'm not gonna join Tom's River Rats ever. Okay, so you can come to Matrix with us. Doug likes cougars, apparently. Huh? We got, we went green. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got. Matrix didn't want in the first place, though. No, we. Matrix didn't want them in the first place. We're, we're, we're getting a little bit of smoke here. Getting a little bit of chatty chat chat. Give me over here with a strike. Matrix right now, you, now you know, this is interesting. I'm gonna go, now I've chatted with Mommy Guzman. Now I'm gonna go over here and move my chair. And I'm gonna chat with Mommy Wichnovich. Cause I have to do equal time over here. Oh, oh yes. So I chatted a little bit with Mommy and with uh, Robbie, Michael Guzman's mom, over here. And please tell everybody who you are. I'm Kathy Wishnovitz, Jason's mom. So, how, how do you think we're right now? Started strong game one, struggled a little bit, but your team still won, that's the important thing, right? Uh, yeah, they did. Starting strong game two, what adjustments do you think that he made? You know, you're a mom, you should know this. Well, I don't know if he listened to me, but I just told him to just slow it up a fraction of an inch. And it seems to be working. That's that's a mom's touch. All right, that that was terrible, Doug. You out of retirement yet? Or you're still retired. In the in the building, Gordon. I know it's UBA channel, so you can't curse on this. But I'm the best bowler here. Yeah, the bleeping machine will be used many times today, I believe. All right. So now that we've done with equal time, and then we've interviewed both moms. Now let's go back to the game. And let's go back over to Scratch. Scratch right now the most interesting because right now the deficit is less than 10 pins. And now that I had all that quality time with, with Jason's mom, Jason does that. Hey, yeah, the announcer's curse for everybody. Oh, there's a sloppy mess for Michael Guzman, but it looks good. Yeah. So basically, I'm getting yelled at for talking to everybody's mom. Talk to that mommy open, talk to that. I, you know, I don't see any other moms around here, so I think that's it. I think I've gotten the allotments of, allotments of um, mother, motherly parents today. And Jason almost makes the spare, does not. So, so, that now being said, we have an open to a strike. Dif difference right now is three. And I was about to say, except I can't say it, Kevin Rossiter, looking to close that gap out, he doesn't. Spare. Gibney right now. I you know what? I didn't realize that. You got two Rossiters also. I can't say Rossiter. I can't say Cordero. Can't say Guzman. I gotta put names to everything. First names. And I'm terrible with names to begin with. But I will say is there's only one Gibney through a double.
And right now there's the second roster. That's Brian over the handicap two. And he doesn't get a mark. Panabianco here is looking to get three in a row. He does. Well, after the first game where both World Championship Series Northeast champions took a little bit of siesta, they both come out guns firing in game two, both of them with the front three. Adams is looking at the front five, and he goes. So assuming that Robbie Guzman, again, got to look at the front names here. Assuming that Robbie Guzman gets a strike, we're going to be tied on marks even 4-4. Four, four, and three-pin game. Can't ask for more than that on the scratch pair. We finally have a competitive match. Now going over the first handicap pair, because we haven't really talked about them a little bit, I said that Tom's River Rats has gotten themselves a lead. They're continuing to get a lead. Try to build it up a little bit. Barry right now is on four bagger, looking to extend a little bit more with the five bagger, and he will not ten pin. Saban looking to double. If he does, Matrix will chip in a little bit more to that lead. Keep in mind, Matrix was down almost a whole entire game one in the first handicap, except for the very end. Except that's how it matters, and based on that sound, that's not a double. Well, it sort of is, but the wrong variety. 4 7 10. So instead of being able to close in on opens from Tom's River Rats, Matrix throws opens themselves. They Not only do they not benefit, they're going to lose a little bit more of a catch up point, assuming that we get a spare. No, we don't get a spare. Now opens for everybody. Now that handicap one is sick of me talking about them because they got to change that spare to an open. Let's go back to scratch. Kevin Rossiter with a strike. Now going down to Robbie Guzman. Guzman, front five. Gibney looking for three in a row. Matthew Gibney looking for three, and he gets it. This was sort of the scratch match that I was expecting, and not the 603 to 578. What the heck was that fest in game one? Uh, you gotta change that spare to an, okay. Aha, uh -huh, got it. All right, so meanwhile, while they're making the change there, Don Levy is trying to get Matrix on the board in the frame with a mark. He's got a potential spare. And we get a double dribble bounce. Robbie, I think your whole team beat your game one so far in the sixth frame. And right now, looking to match up, he does not temp it. Michael goes, challenge accepted. Dunleavy makes a spare, as does Rogers over there. So we see Tom's River Rats still up by around 60 going in seventh frame. So you got two open since the spares. So we'll go away from that pair for a while. Let's go over here a little bit on the handicap two side lanes one and two. That is Brian Rossiter over with the strike. However, there are people that are striking. However, they are from your World Ch your WCS champions from the Northeast. That is a combo. Doug Haran and Tom Panabianco, both of them on the front four. Go hang out over here. Let's see if they can both hit the front five. Doug Haran is up. I jokingly, playfully call him Douglas. Him and I know each other for a very, very, very long time. When I was the head of the World Championship Series, he was the world champion. Strike comes, looking for five. Got it. Maybe he'll be out of retirement now. Maybe not. Who knows? Speaking of people, got it. Brian Rosser. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Michael Guzman, three in a row. Gibney lean three, looking for four in a row. And no, Tempin. Meanwhile, I have Austin Cordero over in lean two. Whereas, they were very comfortable in the first game until until they were tested near the end of the first game. Tom Driver Red's handicap two pair being tested early. And the split from Brian Rossiter over on lane four does not help.
still very close. Five pin game, favor of Matrix. And it will stay that way if Gibbon can make the spare, and he will. I have no idea what Doug said, but I'm sure that he'll reiterate it in front of the mic. Right, so what, what did you just say, Doug? Well, what I said was there is no reason why we should be ever losing to anybody in the last name Guzman. What about last name Rossiter? Ro Rodriguez, maybe. Rossiter, Rossiter's a bad, bro. Like, both them brothers, they don't even know how to bowl, like, at all. Like, th this one, he terrible. And the other one is, I just met him, but he's, he's terrible -er. Man, Why is he on a scratch pad? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not that good no more, bro. Yeah, Matt Gibney's shorter than me. That's why he on a scratch pad. They put all short people in, in Dave on a scratch pad. Well, let, let's <laughs> see. We got, you got, uh, you, you a front five. Looking at Pan Bianco, potential front five. Yo, Tommy, Tommy is good, bro. Like I said, we, we got, you, like you said earlier, we got two champions together. You do. You know, that's a deadly combination, even though we lost the first game. And because, they both had the front five. Because the lady over there struck a lot in the first part of the game. She did. And then the other guy, he bowled, like, he bowled good at the end. And now Guzman no longer striking. Dave oh, made the spare. Guzman, he's nervous, bro. Yeah, you want me to put the heat up? I, th I think he wants to lower the air conditioning. No, they, 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 Dave Adams not enjoying the air conditioning or the heating in here. Robbie Guzman liked the first six shots, did not like that one. Talk to me about that last shot, sir. Got a little too far right early. Just hope that's all it really was. Still a very nice run. Now the question is, can Doug Haran match yours? Because you had front six. Haran's got six. Oh, not a chance. How do you miss the hip in after running your mouth? I, he does have a point there, Doug. If you're, if you're going to chat about ending a streak, at least hit the head pin. Maybe that's why he retired. Uh, and then, then and Robbie on top of that goes, maybe that's why he's retired. Maybe, maybe if Doug makes his spare, he can find his Geritol. And nine pin over there. Actually, nine count. Is that a five pin? That is a five pin. Let's see if Dougie can make a spare. No, almost. All right, now, meanwhile, we have on the scratch here a five pin by your son, Michael Guzman. Now, what happens if he... Now, I know he's not going to miss, but what happens if he misses this? Are you going to powder him? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah Uh-oh. Mom said he's going to powder him, but now he makes it. All right, no powdering for Mom. Michael, I had it on record that if you miss that five pin, your mom was going to powder you. I don't miss five pins. You did not that time, so no powdering for mom. How do you leave a lot of stuff? Do you throw it like shit and you don't strike? So. Oh. All right, the sensors are going to be going out here. Cuss. We got cuss in here. All right, going back over the scratch for a bit. This, this, despite all the striking and the silliness. Yeah, good job, Doug. Everybody's following you now. Despite all the silliness on leads three and four, on the scratch pair, it's still less than a 10 pin game. Question is, whose side is it going to be on? If you get any sort of mark here from Brian Rossiter, it will be Tom's River Rats that'll be up. And there's a strike. Brian Rossiter is there. Now, I haven't even talked to Doug about the Corderos. you got two Corderos, two Rossiters, and two Guzmans. Would you like to say, and a Partridge and a Pear Tree. Would you like to say anything about the Corderos? Huh? Would you like to say anything about the Corderos? Did you talk about the Guzmans and the Rossiters? No, 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 they married, bro. There's still two of them. And yes, Lauren did beat Dougie first game. So we have open, open, and, and now all of a sudden, it was Team Matrix. You have a 5-2 run now by Tom's River Rats, who looks like they're, they want to retake the lead. And they will if El Padrino does not get six, six in a row at this point. He's got the front five. Is he going to make it six? Oh, no, he won't. That's a nine pin. And Tom's River Rats will take officially take the lead back of the handicap pair. And right now, Tom's River Rats will take the scratch pair. 
game two. Well, they're going to be up on scratch pair game two. They don't, don't necessarily have it yet. All right, let's look over here since I haven't given them any love for a while. Handicap pair game, handicap pair pair one, not game one. We're in game two. River Rats still up by around 60, except here comes the strikes, and here comes Team Matrix, and here comes Dan Coppola. Coppola. Double over there. Cutting this down a little bit. It is 64 on the numbers, but mathematically it is now 44. Big strike there by Mark Berry. Now, Tom's River Rats looking to see if they can hold on in game two in the handicap pair one. They did not do so on the first game, and oh my goodness. Well, it looks good up there. Looks great up there, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Michael Guzman a strike. Michael Guzman it looks like he will almost beat his score. There is time left. Saban with the double, and all of a sudden, now it's become interesting. On the handicap pair of one side, Roger's like, now is he going to double? Yes, he is. So, you know, I'm sorry, he's going to spare, not double. Dan Dunleavy is the one that can double. And if he does that, all of a sudden, that 60-pin lead that I was talking to you about a moment ago is going to be a 30-pin lead going into the 10th frame. Is that shot coming up? That double is there. That's good. All of a sudden... It went from, oh, okay, we got something. Now all of a sudden we got a match. Going in 10th frame. That is right now looking to strike. That is a big strike over there for Team Matrix. And because of that open, Matrix is going to take the lead back. Going in the 10th frame. And more importantly, all three Matrix scratch bowlers are on strikes. So you got three daggers coming up in the 10th frame. Meanwhile, Cordero, three in a row. Kevin Rossiter is looking to make it four in a row. Matrix responds to that. What the heck was that frame in the sixth? Two strikes in the seventh. Coppola, three in a row, going into the tenth. They're starting to cut down the lead. Stevens, meanwhile, instead of a double, leaves a four pin, which means Thompson River Rats is going to lose even more lead. Robbie Guzman, four pin. Rossiter right now looking for four in a row. There's a lot of daggers thrown at him. None of them worked. Four in a row for Rossiter. Tom's River Rats pick up another five to three, pick up another two marks. Leads back up to around 40 on the handicap pair two side. However, handicap pair one side, as much pins as Tom's River Rats are gaining, that's how much they are losing on the first pair. Another strike for Coppola that is four in a row. Coppola's going to finish somewhere in the two teens. Stevens Jr., although it won't be a 150, not a lot better. 180, 182, I believe. Right now, first shot. Big shot for Wijnovich. That's a huge shot. That sets up the tone. Not only does he have a lead, they're going to continue keeping it. Gauntlet now pass to Michael Guzman. He's the only person on Tom's River at with a strike going into the 10th frame in the scratch pair. Coppola will finish with 213. Guzman needs them all. He gets a big shot from Guzman. Back over to Wisnovich. And meanwhile, I don't know, uh, River Rats are just, I don't want to say take trying to uh, lose the game. They're not. They're getting marks. But they're not doing what they need to do to keep the lead away from Team Matrix. There's another shot from Wichnovich. Big double over there from Jason. And, and big coming up clutch in the 10th frame. That is a 3-6-10 over by Saban. That will stop the bleeding temporarily. However... Tom's River Rats probably really want that spare. Far pin over from Guzman. He's going to finish in the two, in almost the exact same spot that he did in game one. Big spare from Rogers. I'm sorry, big spare from Barry. 
to Saban right now. Saban may need to spare. Wichovich is going to finish with a 223. Saban gets a spare. It's got to be, both going to be on fills. Now it says 17-17. I still don't know whether or not that handicap's in there. So if it is, it is 17. If it's not, the matrix is down 30. It is not added in there. Okay, so matrix is down 30. Comes a fill shot. Big fill shot over by Mark Berry. He's going to finish with a 206. Here comes Gibney, that's a huge shot there. And that's a double to an open, and that's pretty much it. That pretty much may seal it on the scratch side for Team Matrix. The strike from Saban. However, let's focus on handicap pair two. That's only it's five and six. Here's Rogers. If he throws a strike here, Tom Rats will take game two, and he does it for pin. They're still in pretty decent shape. They need Dan Dunleavy to go out the door, and he's got a miss. So Dunleavy right now on lane six. Team Matrix to have a shot. This has got to be a strike. Ball coming up, and it is a strike. Rogers needs a spare, and he'll get it. Now, if my math is correct, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. If Adam throws a strike here, that is 13. That is what the handicap was. Again, it's got to be a strike from Dunleavy. It is. So now, if it's 13-13, if the handicap's not there, and they're telling me it's not in there. We are now even. It's an even match over here. Higher ball count wins. If it's the same ball count, it's a tie. Rogers. Strike guarantees a pointer. Oh, no. 10 pin. He's going to finish with a 193. If Dunleavy strikes, Matrix wins by one pin, and he will. And if that is correct on that... Is a handicap in there? Okay, I was told the handicap was not in there. Okay, if handicap is in there, then they win by 14. How many times would they say the handicap was not in there? You are my witness. Did they or did they not say the handicap was in there? They just said no. They said no. Thanks, Doug. All right, so now that they just said, and if we listen back to the recording, that the handicap is in there, and now I will double check based on the numbers. Do the numbers here. Meanwhile, while they're figuring that out, let's go over to Scratch because I know Matrix has got that. And I know it because there's no handicap on the Scratch side. Gibney finishes with 243. Dave Adams, 215. And Robbie Guzman's going to finish with a 255, which is going to be high on the pair. But he, does, but he does not get enough help. And because of that, Matrix is going to take the second Scratch game. 681, 659. Well, it's, uh, he's a scorer, so if the score is good. So assuming that people know what they're talking about, and I will make that assumption. E2206. Yeah, you're good. 
Yep. I have the scores. Uh, Brian, can I see something for a second? So I'm here. I want to. I just want to confirm some scourge. Yeah, I thought Team Matrix won that one, and they did. Okay, I'm not losing. I'm not. Go oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to hit you in the head. That would be really bad. All right, I did not lose my mind. I had Matrix winning that <laughs> one, and they did. I explain this to me. They think they won and they lost. They think they lost and they won. Nobody pays attention. Uh, I, I'm paying attention. I've got the scores. And in this case, the scores are correct. I thought Matrix won that. I thought they needed to do it, and they did. All right. So Matrix has won both scratches. Matrix has won both handicap one. And I look at it this way, Dave. If this is if the heat keeps going, you get to lose more weight, like me. We'll, we'll both be like shadows over fall ourselves. He'll be a buck ninety. I'll be like a buck twenty. It'll be great. Now, Dave Adams and I was were talking earlier about that we both successfully lost weight. He's done a much better job than I have. He's close to the century mark. I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. Yeah. What well, you you yeah you 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 well your jersey's got something to be desired. I actually took out a dress jacket that I want to be wearing and then I realized it's like I'm like oh well I can't be wearing this yeah so Dave was talking about the South Jersey dinner and he just realized that he needs to get a new jacket and what I'm realizing is that Lauren Cordero 230 let's go back over here in the handicap two side Doug Haran 243 well Doug did wake up however uh, Nick Taggart fell asleep McTaggart right now on a strike. He can make this interesting on Matrix side. Theoretically, if he goes out the door and Austin Cordero opens, Matrix will have the lead going to their last bowler. McTaggart right now, first shot. Got to have a hit here. He does. Fiping goes down. You hear, let's go, and all of a sudden we got a little bit more pressure going on here with Cordero to make that spare, and he does. Big spare by Austin Cordero. So right now, well, we'll go focusing on game three of everything, of the other two pairs later. Let's go back here to handicap two. And even though, even if Matrix loses this match, they will still be up on the wood. We'll get the exact number how much, and they are going to lose this match because that, or they are going to lose this game, not the match, because that's not a strike. So McTaggart right now looking at least fell. Try to make this a little bit interesting on the bowler side. I mean, this can be a little bit interesting, but... Oh, I was about to say, Matrix needs something like a hideous fill, and there's a hideous fill. All right, this game's not over yet, 207. That math all, all of a sudden means game's not over. Because assuming, assuming that McTaggart will get a pin here, and again, nothing is guaranteed, but assuming he gets one, it'll be, it'll be under 20 pins. Which means in order to lock this out, Brian Rossiter's first ball needs to be a strike. All right, he'll get that. So McTaggart's going to finish with a 181. Go, oh, going over. Final shot here. Brian Rossiter versus Tom Panabianco. Rossiter was the hero in game one. Can he be the hero in game two? First strike here, and he will be. If he throws anything that's not a strike, Panabianco has a chance to steal. And keep in mind, this is a former Northeast heavyweight champion that we're talking about. And he's looking, and oh boy, there's a seven pin. They are clapping. However, if you know numbers, if Tom goes out the door, 
Matrix will win, and it does not matter what Tom's River Rats does. First shot here from Panabianco. No, seven pin. And Tom's River Rats will once again escape in the game in the handicap pair side. Because right now the difference is 18, and Tom does not have 18 pins left to get. Which is unfortunate, which is very fortunate for Tom's River Rats because that's a whiff there. Rossiter finishes with 216. That'll be a 653 stretch. And a 722 handicap with the 69 pins. And they'll take two more camp points. So right now, officially, it is 8 4 Matrix. And right now they have, well, no, they don't have enough yet. They don't have enough points yet. However, Tom's River Rats has got to get some damage control going on, and they got to get the wood, and they got a ways to go on it. Pan Bianco is going to finish with a 238. Then I'll give you the official wood count momentarily. So it looks like seven pins there. All right, I am going to confirm this with Brian Rossiter, but what I have unofficially is Scratch Matrix is up by 47 pins. Handicap number one Matrix is up by 76 pins. That's a total of 123. Handicap, they are, handicap number two, they are down by 29. So the difference is 123 minus 29, 94 pins. So that is what Tom's River Rats needs to make up. If they do, they will win the district. If they don't, Team Matrix will reclaim the title and win for the, I want to say the third straight year? I think it's the third straight year. But they will, they will come back and keep what was theirs last year, which was the district title. Now let's go chat with Brian. Let's see if my math and his math is right. All right, so we agree there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we agree there, and we agree there. Okay, so he is him and I have one pin difference. So seventy-five, seventy-six. All right. So what is ninety-five? Ninety-three. Okay, almost there. So what is ninety-three pins? So that is what Tom River Rats need to make up. They gotta make 90 up, gotta make up 93 pins. If Matrix holds serve, they'll be the champions of the New Jersey True District. And right now, Matrix wants to do that, but they're falling down a little bit on the first handicap. I'm sorry, no they're not. They've fallen a little bit on scratch. And I hear, I hear in the back saying, yeah, we're doing it. Question is, yeah, you're doing it, doing what? That is the question. Same thing we did in the playoffs last year, making a run game three. Well, you got 93 pins worth of wood to make a run off. No different than it was last year. We're making a run. How many pins were we down last year at this point? A lot. We were down a lot. More than, I think it was 200 and change, right? It was 200 and change, yeah. And we made the comeback then, so why can't we do it with 90? So 93 is nothing. <laughs> I'm all for the show, Tom. Hey, Tom, you want to come hang out over here? I, I would love to get some words of wisdom from El Petrino. What do you mean Tom is old? You're retired. At least Tom's bowling. We so, Tom. Back. We will win. There is no doubt. I guarantee it. You don't have to come back. You just don't. You just have to not lose a 93 pin lead. Because that's what the overall wood is. How much is it? 93 pins. Up 93 pins. I mean, we got to win over here first, Gordon. There is no reason why Brian Roster is beating us right now. I just want to text uh, Russ in Vegas and let him know, sorry, Russ, didn't work out for you. Russ, where were you? We missed you here. Well, if Russ is watching this, uh, Tom Baden Bianco says hi. And right now, the rest of Team Matrix is saying hi. The rest of Team Matrix needs to make spares. Dave Adams did that. 
Dave Adams loves the approaches here, and when I say that, that means he doesn't. Dave Adams is a little salty. Robbie Bagu is numb right now, looking for three in a row. And he doesn't get it, Tempin. Assuming that he makes this, Tom's River will be up by around 20 and change on the scratch. Handicap pair. Matrix is starting to cut into Tom River, River's Rat's lead immediately. Couple are coming up, we'll get a double. And he does not, Tempin. So here's what the deal is for everybody playing at home, just a quick recap. Team Matrix has won the first two games scratch. They're up 47. Team Matrix, handicap pair, pair one, which is on lanes five and six. Won the first two, they're up 75. Team Matrix has lost the first two on handicap pair number two. That is Tom River Rats. River Rats are up 29. Total wood, 93 pins in favor of Team Matrix. So not only must Tom River Rats win, they must win by 94, 94 pins or more. I said 95, it's 93. That is according to the official, official scorekeeper, Brian Rossiter. Tom's River Rats, very strong start out of the gate. Now the question is, can they hold on to it? Tag it right now with a double. Panabianco looks like he wants to make a double. We'll see if he does. Brian Rossiter over on lanes one and two, not to be mistaken by Kevin Rossiter. Look at the, to continue the strike from Tom River Rats because right now, five balls, five strikes. Will it be six out of six? No, it will not. Two, four, five. And now that we just said that, Michael Guzman with a strike and Penabianco with a double. So we're at even tied 5-5 five, five and handicap number two. Gibney looking to continue his reign of terror and he does, three in a row for him. Matrix trying to make a move on the scratch side. And Rossiter opens, and that's not good for the Rats. <laughs> Here comes Matrix on all three pairs. And of course, if that happens, okay. and, if, and if Matrix wins 36 to four, needless to say, they won the title. Now the difference between what happened game three here and what happened last year at this point, Matrix fell off immediately at the gate. Tom River Rats made a power play immediately at the gate. And I remember that because I was there to witness it. <laughs> And there was nothing that Matrix could have done. This time around, it does look like the River Rats are continuing the strike, but Matrix is not folding. They're striking right along with them. Adams right now looking to strike right along with him, and he does. So the 20-pin lead, actually the 40-pin lead that Tom's River Rats had on the scratch side is now vanished. Brian Rossler looking to make the spare, and he won't, and that will not help. Two opens by Rossiters, one open by Guzman, and I'm hearing the background hop all over that. Robbie Guzman here needs to, st to stem the tide. Going over here to handicap pair number one. Matrix right now has not opened on that pair versus three already from Tom's River Rats. Three, six, nine, ten for Saban. So that ends his run. Tag it right now with three of his own. Panabianco right now looks for trying to make three of his own. Here's Austin Cordero looking for three of his own. A lot of three potentials, and Austin gets his. Now will Panabianco get his? Oh, he almost, he almost got away with it, four pin. All right, Brian Rossiter up. Rossiter right now looking to strike here, and he does. So assuming that Panabianco gets a spare here, and he shouldn't miss a four pin, that'll be four on four. 
River Rats will be holding on to a little bit of lead, but only with Handicap 2. A little bit of a lead, however, is not going to be good enough. Wood is 93. Not only must the Tom River Rats win, they must win by 93. If not, Matrix is going to get the wood, and then Matrix is going to win. Obviously, Matrix needs to get the wood. If they don't get the extra 10, 10 there is no way they're going to get the 23 that they need in order to win the match. Spare over here from Mark Berry. And another spare by Jim Rogers. So the strike and two spares. See a little bit of an open for Dunleavy. See if Dunleavy can make the spare here on handicap one. He does. So three marks to three marks. And it is Matrix right now holding a 40 plus pin lead. Again, Tom's River Rats not only has to win, they got to win by over 90. So far, not good for Tom River Rats going up in the beginning of the third game. Because what needs to happen, if the Tom River Rats are going to win, they've got to... I'm sorry? What needs to happen is they need to get their heads out of their ass. They need to get their hair, heads out of their rear ends. The children, the children. We're talking about the children. But it just goes to shows, moms can have potty mouths just as much as anybody else. And I do appreciate it. <laughs> and she goes, this one does. Douglas Haran right now does not double, he makes a spare. Now we're going to, on leads one and two, the two bowlers that do have strings going on, Austin Cordero for the, for the Times River Rats and Nick McTaggart for Team Matrix. Here's Cordero looking for four in a row. And he won't get it. Nine pin. Now, if McTaggart can throw a strike here, Matrix will take the lead. Dave Adams right now. Meme on lanes three and four. Look at his parents. It's still pretty close everywhere. The only thing that's not very close right now is Matrix on the handicap one pair. That's lanes five and six, and they're starting to continue to open up their lead. Another double by Coppola over to another open by Stevens. You're looking at a potential 60 pins. And there's a strike by McTaggart. Now Team Matrix has got the lead in all three pairs. And again, if you're Tom's River Rats, you, you can't have this. I mean, you really can't be losing any, nonetheless, all of them. And I know it's still very early at the halfway mark, but it's getting early late around here. Adams with the spare. So we're up three marks to three marks. Matrix up by one pin as we go into the second half of game three on the scratch side. Which Mitch right now, that ball looks good. Will the, oh, I said that ball looks good. Will I have the corner pin fall? No. So 7-10 up there. Can Michael Guzman take advantage? <laughs> Meanwhile, over in lanes one and two, Brian Rossiter needs to double badly here in order to keep up pace. And he will. So at least that's good, but... All right, six pin over there by Michael Guzman. River Rats right now still holding on to to hope here on life on the front two pairs, but the problem with getting blown out on the third pair, and they're and they're in danger of getting blown out on the first handicap pair, is that even if Tom River Rats win, they must win by both 93 plus whatever they lose by on handicap pair number one. And right now in handicap pair number one, they're down by 60. So now you're looking at the other two pair having to win by at least 150 pins in order to get the wood. And if they don't get the wood, Matrix is going to win the district. Theodore Stevens, a junior, with a strike. He's got three marks to go along with his three opens. Dan Coppola right now has got four strikes to go along with his two pairs. And three of those strikes are connected for a three-bagger. That lead is starting to open up a little bit more. Now you're looking at being down 70 pins on the handicap side. If this was game one, okay, fine. It is game three. Got to figure out how you're going to get those pins in order to make up the overall wood. 
Strike here from Mark Berry. Rogers coming up. Saban coming up for Matrix. Rossiter right now cannot take advantage of the 10 pin that Gibney left. Gibney looking to make the spare, and he will. Oh, and a very sloppy strike by Saban. Saban with a little staring. I don't know who he's staring at. Maybe he's staring at a bunch of Team Matrix people. There wasn't any Times River Rats people there from the staring at. Spare over there by Brian Rossiter. And Robbie Guzman up. Assuming Robbie Guzman gets a mark, Tom River Rats will retake the lead. On the scratch side. Meanwhile, handicap side, five in a row for McTaggart. McTaggart, who did not break a 200 in the first two games, certainly looks like he'll break a 200 this game. Come on, five. Whatever change McTaggart made, it is a good one. So we got another open. Well, not another open, first open from Dunleavy. And that is actually the first open from Team Matrix. That stops the bleeding over there. However, still a 60-pin lead that Tom's River Rats needs to overcome on third pair. Second pair coming up, or I should, I should say the scratch pair. Tom's River Rats has a little bit of lead here. Adam will make the spare. And now we start seventh frame. Wichovich coming up. That ball's got to hurry a little bit. It does not. Ten pin. Meanwhile, Brian opens. Doug is very happy about that open. Doug will probably be even happier if Pat Bianco makes a spare. Because if he does that, the Matrix will have a... No, never mind. Forget what I just said. There's an open. It's nice to say if he does that and then he does it, there's an open. All right, Matrix still up, but the lead is only 15 as we go to the sixth frame over on Handicap oh, handicap Pair 2, which is on lanes 1 and 2. Michael Guzman with the strike. Jason Wichovich looks like he'll make the spare any well. Doug Haran will leave a 10 pin. Laura Cordero up. We haven't mentioned that name in a while. Because she stopped striking. Will she start striking here? No, almost, but no, 2 pin. So right now, we're gonna go back over here on lanes five and six. I'm gonna focus eventually on Nick Taggart on one and two when he's up, because he's the one that's got the front five, and he's the only one that's got the front five. Mark Berry up right now. Tom River Rats looking for a double. That's not the right type of double. 210. Saban going to make the spare. Yes. Now, Ma Team Matrix slowly but surely trying to increase that lead. Now, one of the things that I mentioned about yesterday, and it's a staple of the UBA, yes, strikes win games. They always do. But spares usually determine what happens in matches. And again, the better team, technically, the whole entire day so far has been Team Matrix. It is very rare when they open, and when they do, it's usually like one to a game. Tom's River Rats right now, one, two, three, four, five opens in the handicap pair number one, which is why they're down, and they're looking to be down by like 60, 70 pins. And now that I mentioned McTaggart, he left eight pin. Well, he left an eight pin, no 300s today. Then again, when I usually commentate, there are no 300s, usually. Just because. Cordero right now with a spare. I'm sorry, Cordero right now with a strike. River, River Rats looking to battle here. However, and I, and I said this earlier, I'll keep saying it. Battling and barely winning is no good. They've got to take games and they've got to win series. 
Because again, Matrix needs 23. That's a magic number. Even if they lose all three, you're going to have eight on scratch, eight on handicap. That is 16. Overall, the wood is 26. That's enough to take the district. So River Rats have got some work cut out for them. And the best chance for them to do that is on the scratch side. Because at least the scratch side is close and the overall wood side is close. But that does not help you if you're not striking. Michael Guzman, joking around, best shot of the match. It, that, that was a good shot. Uh, that, that was a good shot. You had a nice uh, five in a row. Talk to me about it. Oh, well, I mean, what can you say? It, honestly, it was my best shot of the match. I let go of it. I pured it. Came off my hand clean. And, you know, it's bowling. is what it is. First two games, don't break 200. Third game, that. What adjustment did you make? I actually, I got to I gotta give a nice round of applause to my teammates. Um, Dave Adams, he suggested a ball change, which I did uh, late last game, just to see what it does, and it worked out. And then my team president actually gave me some advice with my footing. So because these approaches are so tacky, um, have me rested up on the bar return a little bit where the air's blowing in. It makes some world difference for me right now. So I'm hoping to keep throwing quality shots, and if they fall, great. If not, hopefully I get off on an easy spare. Good luck, Nick. So right now, with that, we're going over here. Let's focus on the scratch during the eighth frame. And as I said, in order for Tom and River Rats to at least sneak out anything and try to force a split, not only do they need to win, they need to win wood somewhere. The easiest place that they're going to win wood somewhere is on the scratch pair because the difference is only 47 pins. And they're going to have an opportunity to do that. Dave Adams, 4, 6, 7, 10. That will give Tom's River Rats the lead on scratch. Now the question is, can they win this game by more than 47 pins? Obviously, a, a spare here first from Kevin Rossiter will be in order, and you'll get that. Now, Robbie Guzman, no pressure since he's right here next to me. A strike would be, shall we say, nice, important, necessary, almost mandatory. Well, you need a strike, and you need a strike in the ninth, and a strike in the tenth, and... But strike here in the 8th first. Adams with an open. So right now, the scratch pair, right now, if my math is correct, and it usually is, usually, you've got Matthew Gibney right now can go out for a 269, which may match the other two scores. And he needed that strike, and that's not a strike, 10 pin. So right now we're looking, hold on one second, sir, hold on. Right now it's 24 pins up by Tom's River Rats. In order for them to get the wood, they need another 25, 26, we'll somewhere They're down the line. The they're not going to get, get, get it. They're not going to get it. They're not, Tom's River Rats, they're they cool. They're cool, but they're not cool. You know, oh, he missed that spin. We, we, that we, was not we, cool. We're just bowling bad, like, overall. Like, this is not normal for us. Our team is the best team in the UBA. Um, per capita, you know what I'm saying? Pound for pound. We per capita. Best. Per capita. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> well, all right. right now, I mean, if you look at the scores, Matrix is not pulling great. Tom's River Rats has had every opportunity to get themselves into this match. And they, they just haven't done it. So, it's, it's interesting. It is a well-fought match. And Matrix right now is in control. But if they, if they see Tom River Rats again, they cannot do this against Tom River Rats again, or they're going to be in trouble in the playoffs. There's a team over there, Will Harris and his partner are leaving the tour stop to go bowl a team ranking. They just backed out of the whole match to go bowl team rankings just now. You ever heard of that? I, I have, but I guess... They suck anyway, so it's okay, but... So, the, the, the point of what Doug is saying is that two of his teammates are bailing out on the team because the team is bowling like... Um, Dog water, like back guano, like um, uh, rear end. Gibney here, and this shot is going to be huge if he gets it, and he does. That is a big strike because Matrix will be up, assuming that Adams gets a mark here. They'll be up 4-3 going in 10th frame, and Matrix has still got to hold on to that lead on the wood. 
If Tom River Rats has any shot of winning this match, they've got to take the wood on the scratch side. And then they and then they got to hope from whatever frames they have left that they can sneak out enough points to maybe even if they don't win to like make a 22 or 18 or something in that vicinity. However, their handicap squad is making it very, very hard for them. Big strike from Dave Adams. It's going to come down to 10th frame on the scratch. We're going to focus on that. But we're also going to focus on the handicap on game one because overall wood, very, very important. Rogers right now does not get the double. Leaves a 10 pin. Saban looking to double here. And again, looking to get some spaceage. Ooh, doesn't do that. 3-6-10. Matrix is still up. Tom's River Rats is starting to claw back into this a little bit. We've got, I'm not going to say what we have. We have Austin Cordero with a strike, though. Second handicap pair. Right now, that, that is still too close to call. Richard right now, big shot over here. Nope. Uh, 478. That's makeable. However, big shot over here by Michael Guzman. Big shot over here. Really needs a strike, and he will. That is a huge shot for Michael Guzman over in Tom's River Rats. Guys, you want two things. Number one, yeah, you want the split. Number two, you need the wood. You need the wood badly. So now, so it's bouncing here back and forth. Stevens is up on Tom River Rats on the handicap side going in 10th frame. Rossiter right now looking to double up on Tom River Rats. He will. Four marks coming in, so let's just say we go 4-4. Four, four. Still, still going to be a very, very tight game. Rats up by four, shall we say, assuming that we get a double from Pan Bianco going into 9th frame. Guzman here, second shot. That's big as well. Doesn't get it. 2-4. So they'll pick up a little bit. However, they still need to make up 22 pins off the strikes. And their bigger issue is Gibney, who has been on fire on a three-bagger going into the 10th frame. Wojnovich on the fill. Ouch. Well, Jason's going to finish with the 140. No, it's not it. Guzman's going to finish with a 192. So right now, the wood is almost good enough for Thomas River Rats, but here's Gibney. First ball here would be big. Ooh, Tempin now all of a sudden switching over to Brian Ro uh, switching over to Kevin Rossiter. A strike here will give River Rats the woods going to last bowler and he makes a nine pen. Big double by Rossiter and all of a sudden that spare is huge. Give me right now, spare is huge and he'll make it. That spare means that Rossiter needs another strike to hold on to the wood. Carry. Will he get it? No, it will not. So Matrix will have the wood by a little bit with Adams up. Because based on my math, you guys have the wood by 47. And assuming that he that your buddy Gibney does not put the ball in the gutter, and I doubt that he will. Whatever he throws is gonna be the amount that Dave Adams has to work with. Gibney, the huge player on the squad squad today for Team Matrix, 248. Roster finishes with the 201. Basically, 
Uh, Adam throws the first two. They get the they'll get the wood. They won't get the win. Tom Terry Rats will get the win. First two gets them the wood, and a major step closer to winning the district title. First shot here, and Tempin. Right now, everybody's raising their hands up on leads one and two. Lauren Cordero has got a five pin that she needs to, shall we say, make or let the powdering begin. McTaggart here is looking to get in the strike. He will not. Two pin. Shot here from Robbie Guzman. This is literally a six point shot. Strike here will get him the win and will give him the wood. Cordero, by the way, will make her five pin. Six point shot right here for the Rats. Gets it. Now, if Dave Adams gets the spare, what obviously count is everything. If Dave Adams gets the spare, I believe, uh, oh, Robbie Guzman, I think, mathematically still needs the second one. That is assuming, of course, that Adams gets the spare. Anyway. So, not done yet. Yeah, mathematically, yes, he's got to get the second strike. Shot here, second six point shot. Oh, he gets it. Wow. Not, you can see the look of disgust on Dave Adams' face. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but that's the look of disgust on Dave Adams' face. Hmm? Oh, well, they're gonna get along even less now. Strike over there. Dave Adams will finish with 184. Team will finish with 572. And assuming that Guzman keeps the ball in the lane, and he will. Yes, Robbie. That's good enough. Robbie Guzman, big hit, 236. And all of a sudden, instead of 10-0, it is 6-4 in favor of the Rats. Rats absolutely needed to get that, and they will. So now all of a sudden that's there. Now let's go over to the first handicap pair. As we said, overall wood now, very, very, very important. We got a 158 and a 169 and a 195. That's 522, that's 578. And I'm looking at what they did in the 10th frame and that definitely was not gonna be good enough to take out Matrix. So Matrix is going to go 10-zip. Question becomes, what is the Wood roster right now with a double? So they're going to be up. They're going to be up 5-3. Going in, the question is, can they win by enough? So basically, what this means is that. The handicap pair has got to win by as much here as the handicap pair on lanes five and six lost. And they lost by many. And we're looking at probably them having to lose, them by Matrix having to lose by over 100 pins. Right now, that does not look like that's happening. And a big double, big double by Doug Harada. As much as he likes to yap, and he does, he also knows how to show up at the end of games, and he does. It's one of the reasons why he's here in this lineup in this match. Laura Cadera right now looking to make the spare. She will. I'm going to wait for Brian to come over and give me the officials in terms of how much they need to win by. But based on my numbers, it almost looks like Austin and Brian Rossett have got to go out the door and Matrix has got to do what Dougie just did over there for 467. The Rats need two more. Well, not, well, the question becomes, what did you guys lose by over there? Because I can't read it that far. And that's, the a lot is exactly what they've got to win by in this game. Now, they won the first two, but they only won by a combination of 29, so. What, what's, what's the wood? No, you didn't lose by 239. So they're, they're trying to figure out what exactly they need to do. 
Well, yeah, they need another game. Well, you're, you're not getting another game. So basically what you need is you need you need a bunch of bowls to go out the door and you need a bunch of opens by Matrix. How much? We have to win by 159. Uh, I don't think you're winning by 159. I don't think mathematically you can win by 159. Even if you had like the endless 10th frame, you mean I get to 159. What if we bowl the frames of the team that left? And we count well, the teams are the teams that left that quit earlier on over there. I don't know, maybe. I don't know if that's allowed. El Padrino, is that allowed? They, they, they love to bowl a rankings match because their team absolutely is getting smashed. So right now what it looks like is they've got the wood over there on the scratch side. However, your handicap side, number one, won huge. And that is what Tom's River needs to win by. And as much as Matrix may be doing that, I'm not, I don't think there's going to be enough space, even though it goes out the door. I, I, I think the big hole that was left on handicap pair number one is going to be too great to be overcome by handicap pair number two. Uh, I, I don't want to say anything, but I'm looking at the scores and uh, ee. Look at the caliber of bowlers with those scores, that's all I'm saying. Well, I was going to say you have a 226, 222, 239 average. And one game he had a pair of 220s, the second game he had a 206. The third game, which is the one that cost you dearly, your high score was a 195. And then you got 158, 169, 182, 150. And your leadoff bowler did not break a 40 series. It does. Yeah, it, it happens. Unfortunately, you did not want it to happen now. And Tom Pambiano's first strike in the 10th frame is pretty much going to seal the deal. So I'm going to wait for the official ruling, but I believe unofficially... Yeah. Yeah, I think unofficial, that's exactly what it's going to be. It's 24-16. Yeah. They, <laughs> Matrix needed 23. They got 24. So the, the unofficial core is congratulations to Team Matrix for winning the New Jersey Shore Division again. Repeat champions. They may have a little bit of different personnel, but they're getting the same results. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the official ruling on this, but unofficially, it looks like Dan Dan Coppola or Coppola will once again be cashing a first place check. So Dan, now that it's over, <laughs> he did. Yeah, he did. Roster is gonna finish out. Rossiter is going to finish out for around a 220 and change. And Austin Cordero, 242. And while they win the game, as I said, part of it is they've got to win, but they also got to win by enough. And they're going to win the third game by 70. And that's going to be around 99 on that pair. Plus what they did on the scratch pair, but they're going to fall short on that handicap pair. And and technical and on the technical standpoint, that's how you win, and Team Matrix is going to. Mathematically, it looks like that you guys took twenty four sixteen, and I believe that is enough to win the title. Yeah, we need we needed twenty three. It looks like we got just enough. So it doesn't matter if you win by one or if you win by a million. So Dan, congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Talk to me about this match because. It was interesting. This was going back and forth. This was going back and forth. But what made the difference in the match was your pair. Yeah. Because you had the overall wood. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't do much except strike out in the second game. Uh, Dan and Dave took care of the, the heavy lifting. And uh, looks like, you know, us taking 20, out, you know, 20 by ourselves by winning by 160, you know, pretty much took care of the match. So, But, you know, it's a team, team thing. And uh, next time, Scratch and Handicap 2 will pick us up. Well, one of the things I, I want to I want to ask you one more question, then we'll get dug in here. Sure. One of the things that we're talking about a lot is spare making, spare making, spare making, and how spares win. And your pair was a sterling example of that, where you guys were grinding when you weren't striking, you were sparing. Um, one of the things that I mentioned was I think you averaged one open per game. Talk to me about that in terms of uh, team matrix and how important technically that is. Yeah, I mean usually in the UBA spares do not win. 
But uh, on this particular pair, with the way the approaches were and the way we broke them down, which was terrible, uh, spares were important. If you, if you look at their team score, they didn't have a double until the 10th frame. So, uh, you know, we just kept clean, and that took care of business. Yeah, Doug, let's, Doug, let's chat here. Uh, un unofficially, 24-16, congratulations again. It's, a, it's official. When you, when you got Brian Fazino buying you a beer, you can't never lose. <laughs> but he didn't buy me a beer, he didn't buy me a beer today. Yo, you owe me a shot. All right, he owe me a shot. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. Shout out to come Ross. You guys talk to Absolutely, yes. You can, you can take a shout out to anybody you want. Ross, enjoy nationals. Thank you for your text message. And sorry I had to do this to you, but I'm sure we will meet again, buddy. Well, you didn't lose to him. I never lose to Russ. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen, this guy's name is I am the UBA. We don't even know who he is. You know what I mean? So. He bowled the worst of his whole team. But hey, when you got Tom and you got Dougie and you got Jason Wisnovitz on the team, who am I? I'm Hall of Fame Dougie, bro. Your pair hasn't won a game in three matches. No, hold on. It wasn't my fault. It was that girl's fault. It was, it, was, it was Lauren Cordero's fault. Lauren bowled good today. She bowled. Even on TV today, bro. Yeah, here we go. Except we got potty mouth language, so I'm going to move the phone over here. However, I would like to speak to you, Laura. First of all, great shooting today. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, it was fun. We came in the last minute, bowled well, overcame some tough stuff on the lanes. Very proud of myself. Happy for the team. Match, but your pair won 10 zip. Yes, yes, we did. We won. We won all ten of our points in our lane. Happy was able to contribute that to the team. So thrilled about that. So now let's talk about the playoffs a little bit. Now format's a little bit different this year, so you're not. We don't know who you're facing yet. So, and I know first round you're not going to be facing Matrix because Matrix has got a first round bye. So everything's going to be based on points and seeds. Is it, how does it feel to bowl against somebody possibly not in the New Jersey Shore? Is it going to be more fun because it's something different? Or is it going to be a little bit more nerve-wracking because it's something different and it's maybe a team that you haven't bowled against? I think different is always fun. You know, it doesn't really matter who it is. Like, I know all these people, but, you know, there's so many people even in the Jersey Shore that I don't know personally. So I think as a team, no matter what it is, you know, different is, we're always up for the challenge. So I think that's all that matters. All right. Uh, anything you want to say? Any shout outs? Anything like that? You both great today. No, thank you so much. I, I had great. It was it was nice coming at the last minute, and you know I'm happy that we made it to the playoffs. So just thrilled about that. Oh, absolutely. Playoffs, second place is pretty good. You get a nice size check with that too. Yeah. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Thank you, got, you so much. Thank you got you got it. Good luck in the playoffs. I want to chat with Dave Adams for a second, but before we do that, uh, let's get the official wording here from Brian Rossiter. Okay. Matrix wins 24-16. Total wood. They win by 61. 61 pins, wow. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of the things that I thought was going to happen. I thought the danger was going to be, I didn't think that it was going to happen that way, but I thought the danger in game three, you had your first handicap pair just struggling. So talk to me about that. Hard to say. I just think that execution came down to it. They executed at the end more than we did. And it all boils down to it. That's true. That, that being said, Two of your two of your pairs won the wood, so you had the one on the scratch side. So you got six there, and then you got got ten there. Are these things that you're going to keep in mind? Now, obviously, your season's not over. You've made the playoffs. Congratulations on that. Great job. And I think you guys still take second, if my math is correct. That's the worst we could have. That's the worst we could have fallen before the day even started. We so wanted, we wanted more than that. Just we fell two points short. Well, congratulations on that. Now. The notes that you're going to take here, you're going to take those notes, take them into the playoffs, or are you just going to throw this out saying, hey, whatever? Like, what's the mindset? Sometimes you know, like the bad days get a, just like it never happened. But I'll see Russ on Monday in Reno. We'll talk. But it's just nice to bring Russ team back to the community, let Matrix win their first match out of six. Although it's been 2021 since they last beat us. Uh -huh. So it was just not, it was at the end, it wasn't our day. If you're going to let them beat you, let it be now and not the playoffs, right? Hey, it took half of our players being in Nationals yep. for them to beat us. We gave it everything we had. We couldn't say anything else. There you go. Well, congratulations again on finishing second place. And I'll see you in the playoffs, both of you. All right. First round of the playoffs. Oh, let's, let's have a little chat ski here. Thank you. 
So, yeah, Cavalier or Bolero, however you want to put it, first round. Have a seat. Have a seat. I want to get the load off of your feet. I don't want the heat to, like, melt you a little bit more. And it was very, uh, very warm. The approaches were not good, but I didn't bowl good. But that's First of all, congratulations on the win. We won, so that's what's important. Uh, scores were not great, but break even in brackets, even though, uh, that's uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> broke even. My worst set of the year by a hundred pins. So that's uh, that tells you what the scores were like today. I should have threw it better, but you know what? I'll, I'll say this, and I don't know what that's going to be going to play out. Your scratch team pulled as a unit and pulled very well first two games, came in clutch first two games. A little bit of a bibble at the end of the third game, but. First two games coming in, you got you really set the pace. Talk to me about that. Well, you know, we threw the ball well for the most part. You know, we could have bowled a little better, I think. We've had days better than this, but you know, Matt bowled good all day and held us up. Me and Jason struggled a little bit, but mates tried to make spares and stay clean. And with the scores where they are, that was enough. Yeah. So, interesting question for you, because you've transplanted from the New Jersey South to New Jersey Shore. Playoffs this year are a little bit different for two reasons. Number one, you get a first round bye because you win the district, which is something great to play for. Number two, whoever you're going to face in the second round, not necessarily from the New Jersey Shore, it could be from anybody in the Northeast Conference. I did not realize that. So, so there is a chance that in the first round, you could be seeing, oh, I don't know, AC Express or some other team in the South that you used to hang out with that now you get to be reacquainted with. What's your thoughts on that? Um, well, I'm gonna, we're going to bowl whoever's in front of us, and I'm not really worried too much about who it is because I'm not going to shoot 6-0 again and uh, <laughs> place, uh, place a large wager on the over for the next match. So we'll see I, how yeah, it goes. I, I would too. Yeah, that's about as bad as I can bowl today. So at least I made most of the spares. I only missed one, you know, which is one too many. But we'll see. We should be all right. Is there any team in the South, in New Jersey South, that go, I would really like to see this team in the playoffs? Not really. They're about all, about all the same. Well, you know, we'll, at least we'll still have some brackets up here. 